Thank you, Ed. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so thrilled to welcome you to day one of the Brave New Work Conference, Turning Point 2020. On behalf of TD and the TD Ready Commitment, we are so pleased to be supporting this conference and the work by the Public Policy Forum, which is helping us collectively shape the conversation on the future of work, an increasingly important topic in these uncertain times. And what a difference a year has made. No one could have predicted what has happened since our inaugural Brave New Work Conference only one year ago. Let me first start by acknowledging how COVID-19 has impacted you, your families, friends, neighbors, and communities. I know it has not been easy. I hope you are keeping well and keeping safe. Today my role is to open this amazing conference and as I do so, I want to give you some perspective on our experience navigating COVID-19 at the bank. A little bit of a bird's eye view into how we've been adapting. I will focus on the impact of the pandemic on our colleagues and customers, the importance of culture and sense of purpose to workforce adaptability and transformation, and how we are taking what we have learned and applying it the changing world of work. At TD, our purpose is to enrich the lives of our colleagues, our customers, and our communities. This reflects our long-standing view that banking is a calling and that we will only be as strong as the communities that we serve. In many ways, our response to COVID-19 gave us a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to show what it means to live your purpose as an organization. Like many companies, over the past few years, we've been taking steps towards a new world of work in response to globalization, technology, the competition for talent. We invested heavily in technology, skills, and training, and in the last few years, we've doubled down by encouraging our colleagues to embrace lifelong learning and skills development and really giving them the tools they need. And while we were making great progress on this journey, the last 11 weeks, the efforts have definitely been pedal to the metal. Let me give you a few examples of how this has affected the way we operate. First, we have been able to execute with speed. Before the crisis, banks might not have been top of your list as examples of the organizations that move fast. There is no doubt, though, that through the pandemic, we have executed with speed. We've achieved in days and weeks what would normally have taken months or years. We clearly demonstrated, and I have to say in some cases even surprised ourselves, that we have the speed muscle, a behavior we want and will reinforce and nurture as we move forward. Secondly, we've been able to run the bank effectively working remotely. You know, nearly 60,000 of our colleagues are now working from home. Prior to the pandemic, that number might have been closer to 18,000. For some colleagues, that meant bringing their laptops home. For others, it was ensuring they have the special technology in place provided by our Assistive Technologies Lab. For 85% of our traders, that meant shifting the incredibly high-tech trading floor to colleagues' kitchen tables. This had never been done before. And 9,000 of our contact center colleagues are working from home. You can only imagine the tech support required to make this happen in about three weeks. The pandemic pushed us far beyond what we had ever thought possible and challenged our thinking about where we work. We've proven that we can work productively and collaborate efficiently no matter where our teams are located. And finally, our customer interactions have changed. At TD, we built our customer proposition on having the best people in our branches for our customers to interact with. And while we've been building out our digital experience, we still know that the branch experience is such a significant part of what makes our customers choose TD. And suddenly, we were encouraging customers to stay home and bank with us by phone or internet. We are working hard, as I know so many businesses are, to meet customers' needs and expectations. 
I feel very proud that we were able to leverage the investments we've been making in technology to already deliver 100 new applications. We could also see through technology what customers were looking for, financial advice. We could see Google searches were up more than 1,000%. So we quickly stood up TD Advice to simplify financial relief efforts, which had 500,000 unique visitors in the first few weeks. That's just a little bit of a window into how a major organization like TD was adapting and changing as the pandemic set, set in. What was key to that? Culture and our sense of purpose. The last few months have been a time of uncertainty for our colleagues. So early on, our CEO committed to no job losses in 2020, removing an immediate burden for tens of thousands of our employees. Colleague feedback was significant and it was appreciative. Our strong culture and purpose enable us to navigate our response to the pandemic. Let me note a few areas. Flexibility. Our colleagues rapidly entered a figure it out world, driven by an understanding of what needed to be accomplished. The collaboration across all departments has been extraordinary. Learning technology and new ways to get things done at speed and by trial, even while they were adapting to working from home and under new operating conditions in our branches. In fact, recognizing the impact on the age 18 to 24 year old cohort, we kept our commitment to 400 summer interns. All those interns will be working remotely. Their teams are figuring out the best way to build work and social conditions that engage them and provide a meaningful work experience. On redeployment, we've been adopting a just-in-time approach to reskilling as projects that were priorities pre-pandemic became deprioritized. Some of our colleagues were stretched way beyond capacity while others experienced uncertainty with their workload. So we established a centralized redeployment office. To date, over 5,000 colleagues have received training and moved into new roles. And finally, access to learning resources. We built a learning platform called TD Thrive 18 months ago to support our upskilling efforts. From March to the end of May, we saw an increase of 9,500 users, that's 20% increase, and 180,000 learning completions. I thought you'd be interested to know the most popular searches were Python, Agile, and Leadership. Our Anywhere, Anytime Work Integrated Learning Platform illustrates how great things can happen when you put the power to learn in the hands of colleagues. So how might this different state impact the way we approach the changing nature of work? Well, that is exactly what this conference is all about. Let me offer a few thought starters based on our experience. Put your people and your purpose first. We have seen how this is truly the catalyst to the future of how we work and transform. This must be supported by leaders who, in addition to technical or professional skills, possess strong people skills, especially in a work from home world where engagement and communication is essential. Acting to ensure inclusion is critical. We know certain groups have been impacted more than others. For instance, the 18 to 24 cohort, women, and diverse communities. So being intentional to avoid widening a have and have not gap is key. Lifelong learning and reskilling are core to having the flexibility and capability to pivot to the evolving workplace and in crisis. And finally, We've learned that working effectively from home is an option, and this opens immense opportunities for individuals and organizations, from where to live, hours worked, and office space requirements. So thank you so much for being here, and thanks for listening. I look forward to hearing more from the great lineup of speakers over the next few days. Now, back to you, PPF. <laughs>